I wanted to take a few minutes to go over some of the basic concepts with recursion. You should have read the chapter in your textbook that corresponds to recursion by this point, and you also should have read chapter 13 in the online content, which is recursion. If you have a newer textbook, it may be a different chapter than 13. So recursion gives us the ability to repeat code without using a loop. But when you think of recursion, you should think of it similar to how you think of looping or iteration because it is a way to do the same type of thing. But in this case, we're not going to use the, the keywords for or while or do while for loops. We're going to actually have a method call itself in order to repeat the code in that method. There's a really good handout on the internet that I will give you the URL or the link to that you can look at and I'm going to use some of it here because this has really good um, information in it. And so again, we know that we can call a method. You've been doing that pretty much for the entire course where you write a method and then you pass a value to it or not and it does something for you. Sometimes it returns a value, sometimes it's a void. But so we've got the idea of a method where we're doing something in the code. We've just never actually called the same method from within itself. Well that is what recursion is. Not only can methods call other methods, they can call themselves and we call that a recursive method or a method within a method. Um, and here is an example that he's given that's kind of a generic example, but I want to go to the terminology really quickly here and then we'll look at an example. So a recursive method is any method that calls itself. Now, just like with iteration, when you can have an infinite loop and we know that is a bad thing because it will crash the computer, it will run forever. Just like in a loop, whether it's a for loop or a while or a do while, we always have to make sure the code is written in such a way that the, co the loop will eventually terminate. Well, you have to do the same thing with recursion, and we call that the base case. It's very important. It will stop the recursion and will prevent an infinite recursion, or basically the equivalent of an infinite loop. And the way that works is generally through an if statement, and we'll see an example of that. And we usually will have one case where we'll say, okay, if this particular set of circumstances is true, just return a zero or return a one or just return back. And we won't actually call the method again in the base case. So you will see an example of that. All right, and then we have some other terminology, directly recursive, the method calls itself. We can have indirect recursion where the method calls another method that eventually results in it calling itself. But we're going to deal mostly with directly recursive here. You may have also seen the terms tail recursion and infinite recursion. Well, infinite recursion is where we talked about where you forget the base case or you set up the logic for the base case incorrectly so that the recursion keeps occurring, the method keeps calling itself, it never stops. Uh, and that is bad. That's like an infinite loop. And then you'll see occasionally in the term tail recursion, a recursive method in which the last statement executed is the recursive call. Um, and we'll see examples of that eventually. Now, on the AP exam, you may be asked to trace a recursive method, meaning here's the method code, here's a value, tell me what the output would be, and you'd have to kind of trace through the method, of course, without your compiler. And so he's just giving you some advice here to go line by line. Whenever the recursion happens, when the method calls itself, it creates a new copy of itself and transfers the flow of control to that new copy. So in theory, you're sort of recreating that method over and over each time you call it. With each copy of the method having its own code, its own parameters, its own local variables, 
So Java compartmentalizes or understands that if I'm going to call myself, if I'm a method, I'm going to call myself five times and I have five variables, it's going to create 25 copies of those variables and keep them all separate for each call to the method. After the recursion, when a recursive method calls itself, say it's called itself five times, when that fifth recursive instance gets done executing, control goes back to the calling environment. And each call has to execute completely, and we'll talk about that eventually. Um, so you make some good points here, but it really helps to look at an example. Now we've already done a factorial way back where we used a loop. I used a for loop, some people used while or do while. And we remember that a factorial is taking a number and multiplying it by every number less than itself, excluding zero, of course. So we're, if we have a factorial of, say, 4, we're going to multiply 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and get uh, our answer. And if we remember our code for factorial, You probably had something like a for loop similar to this. So if I want the factorial of 5, I'm going to loop from 1 to 5, and I'm going to multiply 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, or in this case, I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going up. I set temp equal to 1, and I also started i at 1 so that I'm never multiplying by 0. And then I get my answer. Okay. And he has his version of the factorial with a loop, which we call an iterative version of factorial. Now we're going to do a recursive factorial, and let's look at the difference here. When I want to, in his case, he wants to put this method actually in main without going to all the overhead of creating a separate file. If I want to put a method in my main class, I can put the method above main, and if I want to do that, I have to use the keyword static. So it becomes public static, and then the return type method name parameters. So instead of going to all the overhead of creating a whole factorial or fact file, putting this in, then having to create a fact object, and so on, I can just put the method itself right here in main, right above it as long as I use that keyword static. So I'm just showing you a way to do this in one file. And what he's doing is he's setting up the base case here. Notice that when we get down to a zero for our num value, we will return a one. This will keep us from multiplying by zero. But we're not going to call the fact method here. This is the base case. This will stop the recursion. So when our num gets down to 0, we're going to return a 1 back to whichever version of fact called us. Otherwise, we're always going to take num and multiply it by num minus 1. So if you think about this, if num is 5, I come in, 5 is not 0, so I drop down here. I'm saying multiply 5 by call this method again with a 4. So I come in, now I've called the method a second time, created a second instance of it in memory. I've got 4 as my num, 4 is not 0. Now I say call 4 times fact of 3. This becomes a 3, it's not a 1. I call 3 times fact of 2. Now I come in, 2 is not a 1, I call 2 times fact of 1. Come in again, fact is 1, so I call 1 times, and look at this, fact of num minus 1, now 1 minus 1 is 0. This is important. When I pass a 0 in to my umpteenth call to fact, num is now 0, I return a 1 back. So I'm never going to multiply by 0. I've stopped the recursion. I'm sending a 1 back. And now I'm rolling back up because I'm saying I'm going to say 1 times 1, where I called fact of 1 is 1, which is going to pass back a 1 to fact of 2. 
2 times 1 is 2. That's going to pass or return a 2 to fact of 3. Okay, so it takes a minute to wrap your head around this. This is not tail recursion because this base case is at the top of the code. Make sure I'm telling you correctly here. The recursive method, which is the last statement executed, is the recursive call. So let's go back and look at the factorial recursive. All right, so the important thing here is honestly and the most important thing I think in this handout is this very very well done trace through and this is where it's important in order to understand recursion you have to get this if he's pat I did a five he's doing a factorial of four num is equal to four because num is not equal to zero notice we pass we we're going to return four times whatever value is returned by fact of three okay then so I'm not done with my first fact of four I'm passing control to another copy of the factorial method which is taking a parameter of three but this is still not finished this is kind of open this does not have the value to return yet so now I go to fact of three it becomes three times fact of two. Now this one's open, it's not done, it's not finished, it doesn't have this value to return yet. It opens the call to fact of two. Fact of two, again, is not finished, it is still open. It's going to pass value to fact of one, okay, which then returns all the way down to fact of zero. Now I've hit my base case. All of these methods are still open. They're still, in fact, in the process of executing. They have not closed. That's what's important to remember. Just because I've called fact of zero, I still don't have the return of that yet here to multiply. I'm getting that by calling this. Now I've returned a one. Now I've got to walk back up and close out the execution of each of these open calls to my fact method. So now that I'm returning a one here, this this version of fact closes, it's done, it stops execution and it returns control to the open fact of one call. Now I've got a one to stick in here. One times one is one. I've got my answer to return here. This one closes out in memory. The variables are destroyed. It's done. Now I'm returning control here to fact of two. I've got a one here to substitute in. Two times one is two. This one closes out. Its variables are destroyed. It's no longer executing. It returns control here. It substitutes a two in here. Three times two is six. Now this one closes out. Its variables are destroyed in memory. Its execution is done. It returns control here. This becomes 6 times 4, which is 24. Now I'm totally finished with all my fact methods. This one closes out. It's done. It returns a 24 back to main. All the temporary num variables are destroyed in memory. And control returns to wherever in main that I've called this so I can continue on. So that's what I really want you to see. It's not just that they all open. They stay open until we hit the base case, in which point then we start closing out all of these calls and we walk back up. So that's what's important and what I want you to see. So when I want to call this in main, and just ignore the Fibonacci, we'll do a separate lecture on that. But here is my recursive example. I'm going to set up a variable because this method returns an int. I do fact of 5. In his case, he did 4. Okay, I'm just using a different number. And then I'm going to print out my answer. When I do it by the loop, I get 120. 
when I use my recursive call, I get 120. And all this does is it comes up here and it calls this over and over and over as you saw. That's what I want you to see. That